Hello friends, I'm out here at Comstock Hills on the south side today. It's a beautiful day in April. Thought I'd come out and uh, have a little fun in the forest. I'm out here to try out some new stuff. I've got a uh, uh, Fobachi folding survival shovel that I want to check out. It looked pretty cool. Um, we'll see what, that, what I can do with that. So we got all kinds of fun stuff and new toys and stuff to play with today. So let's go. I'll see you on the trail. Well, as I said earlier, I'm out here on the south side of Comstock. I haven't been out here in a while. Let's see if anything has changed. Uh, they got some nice trails out here. Uh, pretty well groomed to get down to this point. A lot of people come down here and use the ravines for target practice, uh, shooting all sorts of different guns. So if we hear any gunshots, don't, don't be alarmed. It's just somebody practicing. Uh, it's a beautiful, gorgeous day. I can't believe it. I dressed a little heavier and I thought I would have wore long sleeves, but I'm kind of wishing I would have wore short sleeves already. It's pretty warm out. But uh, I'm going to be playing around with some new equipment. I mentioned I have a, a Fobachi folding survival shovel. I was able to pick it up really cheap on Amazon. You know me, I'm cheap. I don't buy it unless it's really cheap. I'm looking forward to playing around with that and see what I can do with it. I might try to dig a, a Dakota fire pit and uh, cook over that. I've got myself a nice big juicy slab of 100% beef in my backpack. I'm looking forward to that for lunch and cook that over the fire. That'll be good. I'm mouth watering already just thinking about it. But all, all in all, I'm just I'm just happy to be out here in the forest again. This winter and spring has been miserable. A lot of rain, a lot of just nasty weather. So it's good to be out here again. I know I said that in the last videos that I, I shot, but really, truly, it's just part of me. Just part of me. My heart just loves to be out in the uh, in the wilderness, out in nature. So we're gonna have a good time out here. Thank you for joining me, and I hope uh, you have as good a time as I have uh, watching this. And I encourage you. Don't be a, a couch hiker. Get out there. Get out there in the woods. You can just go for some short day hikes if you have to. But get out there and enjoy nature. Make some adventures of your own. decided to dig a, a Dakota fire pit. I've never done one before. This will be my first attempt at this. I've seen a lot of them. Uh, I've watched videos, seen pictures and everything, but I've never actually done one myself. So this will be my first time. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so why do a Dakota fire pit? Well, a Dakota fire pit is often called a stealth fire. So you dig a hole down in the ground and you can't see the fire so easily. You can't see it definitely not from a distance. Um, at night you can see a little bit of glow from it. Um, but it also reduces a lot of the smoke. I have, some people say they're a smokeless fire. I wouldn't go that far, but everyone I've seen has a little bit of smoke to it. Uh, but it's definitely less smoke than just an open fireplace or a fire pit that you would have at a campsite. So the first thing I would do is I'm going to clear out all the, the brush and the twigs and stuff here and get rid of that. We don't need anything catching fire here. Yeah, I'm going to be using my Fobachi Folding Survival Shovel. Now, I ordered this on Amazon recently. Kind of a cool little shovel. It's a little smaller than I thought it would be, but uh, I actually like the size. I think it's really just about perfect to take with you. It's not too heavy. It weighs a, a couple pounds maybe. That's not too bad. It's made out of all steel. 
Everything here is, is, is metal. It's, it's not plastic. I've seen some that have a plastic ring at the top here. Yeah, I'll probably break that in five minutes. So you got your shovel, obviously. And it's got a nice serrated edge here. I could actually use that for cutting through roots or cutting even a branch if I needed to. It's sharpened all the way around. Uh, not real sharp. I'm probably going to take my uh, sharpener to that and make it a little bit sharper. Um, so I can cut through roots easier, but it's not bad. I think it'd be perfect for today uh, Has a bottle opener on it Not really sure what you would need a bottle opener for in a survival situation I typically when I go out in the woods. I don't take glass bottles with me. I don't see the necessity the need for those uh, But I suppose in a survival situation you might come across a a beverage of sort that you need to open up with that uh, also comes with a, a pick in case you got some hard clay or something you need to dig through. But I'm just going to use the shovel portion today and uh, we're going to dig a Dakota fire pit or a Dakota fire hole or however you want to call it. So let's see how this works. Now you want to start with digging about a six eight inch hole um, about a foot deep. So if you're digging in grass you can actually cut around in the grass and take the grass off in one clump and that will, uh, that will enable, you, enable you to be able to put that back later so nobody can see that you were here. Again, that's the whole idea of a stealth fire. Man, this thing, the shovel's really making some quick work out of those roots that are right there. Um, chopping right through them. Some of them are good half inch thick. And it's chopping right through them. Look at that. Look at that. Chopped right through it like it was nothing. One of the tips I have for, uh, would say for digging a Dakota fire pit, Try to do it in an area where you're right, not right next to a tree. Now obviously if you're in the forest, that uh, makes it hard to do that, but you want to try to be at least a little ways away from a tree. Okay, there's my first complaint of the shovel. Um, that wiggles around, I just pinched my finger in there. Let's see if I can make that a little tighter. Hey grub, may want to go fishing? Evil little things. Another rip, cut through it like nothing. This thing does a good job. Now this is quite sandy soil here, so I'm really thankful for that. Most places I dig around here, everything's clay. So really happy that's pretty easy to dig through. Okay, I've got my hole. It's about maybe eight inches across, approximately a foot deep. So keep your, your uh, dirt right near your hole. This will make it easier for when you want to put the fire out, if you have to put it out in a hurry, you just scoop it right in there, fire's done. And you won't have to worry about messing around, hauling dirt over. You don't even have to haul water. This is wet. It'll put the fire right out, no problem. Okay, now once you got one, one hole done, you want to just go over a few inches, maybe six inches or so, and you want to dig a second hole. You can dig it pretty much exactly like the first one, six to eight inches across. A foot down, what we're going to do is we're going to connect the two underneath and make a little tunnel. Now you could dig this straight down like we did with that one. Looks like I got some rocks in this one. Some roots. Oh yeah, we got some rocks here. Whew, 
That cuts nicely. There we go, through that gravel. Now, you could dig this one straight down, or you could dig it on an angle. Now, the advantage of the angle is if you're in a situation where you got some wind that's coming across, and you dig it on an angle, you could set something up here to catch some of that wind, and it'll blow down that hole, and it'll feed oxygen to the fire, make that grow really hot. Make it great, you can boil water in minutes, in a couple minutes with that. But today, I have no wind, and I'm not really that concerned about it. So I'm just gonna go straight down. Okay, now I need to connect these two. And uh, hopefully, hopefully the uh, Hopefully the roots and the rocks and stuff won't be too much of a, uh, an ordeal to deal with. I'm going to play around with this thing, see if I can maybe go on an angle with it. See if that pick will help any. Pick not helping any that way. roots in the way. Man, that thing, that thing just eats right through those roots. No problem. Well, I'm almost connected. Okay, well, got my holes. Not too bad, pretty quick. This thing did a fantastic job. Now I'm putting all this wood in. I'm kind of intermingling it with some big stuff and some small stuff. And just kind of stand it up in there. If you stand it up, it'll burn down kind of like a candle wick will. It'll burn down. Uh, that works really good with uh, the Swedish uh, candle. I don't know if you've seen that. The Swedish, it's a fire that stands up and you burn it on the ends of the logs. Works really good for that too. So I'm just standing this stuff up, putting it down in there. I'm intermingling small stuff, big stuff. That's one of the nice things about this is you don't really have to have huge logs. You don't have to do a lot of batoning. You can if you need to have dry wood and batoning is gonna be your answer to that. So you can get down into the core of that dry wood, then by all means do that. But for this, you don't really need to do that, which is good because I found a great piece of standing, standing birch earlier. And I was gonna baton it down and use that, but uh, it was all punk wood inside. So, didn't use it. That's all right. This will work just fine. Not a lot of standing dead wood out here in this area. Uh, and if it is, a lot of times it's punk wood because it's so swampy through here. So, this will work just fine. Lots of twigs. Twigs burn great. The downside of twigs is they will burn a little quickly. They'll burn quicker than the, the big pieces will. So, that is the downside. But for just cooking a, a little lunch, We'll be all right. Now the, the Dakota fire pit 
though it is a great fire, great way to have a fire, is not your best option if you're in a survival situation and you're dealing with hypothermia and you need to stay warm, your body's losing uh, warmth and you need to heat it back up, this is not your best option. So this is more for uh, cooking, uh, boiling water, maybe uh, processing water, things like that. That's what this is better suited for. You can, there are ways to make this a, a fire that you can keep warm with. If you put it in your tent, there's certain ways to do that. I'm not doing that today, but there are ways to do that. All right, I think I have enough wood in my hole. We're gonna go ahead, I got some tinder. I got the world's best tinder dryer lint. Let's see what we can do with that. Okay, now I didn't do a bunch of uh, feather stick or anything like that. I'm keeping it simple today. There is loads of this birch or uh, bark around, this birch bark all over the place. So I have no doubt in my mind that I will be able to get a fire started here without problem. So let's get some of this bark here. Now you're going to want to start the fire very much, very similar to uh, what you would do for just a regular fire. You want to just build it right on top and it'll burn down. Like I said, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna use some dryer lint. Best stuff, and it's free. Everybody just throws it away. Save that stuff, man, that's an excellent fire starter. Of course, for legal fires, don't be stupid. Punk wood again. One of the things about punk wood is it smokes a lot. So if you're trying to do a stealth fire, you don't want punk wood. Here we go, we have a fire. Now as that's burning and it's pulling the air up from underneath as the air gets warm air rises what it'll do is it'll cause air to suck through the other hole and out up and around into the fire
Sorry about that. I just heard something over there crashing through the, the woods. I'm going to go check it out and see what it is while this is uh, burned down a little bit so I can cook over it. But what I was saying is that when that, that draws the air down through this hole and up through, so it's constantly getting a feed of ox, oxygen, which a fire obviously needs. So it's a very efficient way of making a fire. And now I'm going to go see what's going on over there. I heard some crashing around over here in the woods. It definitely wasn't anything small. I'm guessing a person. I didn't think there was anybody else out here today. It's Monday morning. Most people are working or in school. It could be a wild dog. So, let's go find out. I don't see anything now. It could have been a deer maybe getting stuck in the brush. That has been known to happen. But with all the racket I've been making out here, chopping wood, starting a fire, filming, talking, I can't imagine a deer coming anywhere near. I just heard it again, but this time it was more distant. So hopefully whatever it was is hightailing it out of here. I don't really want to have any run-ins with any wild animals. I love nature, but nature can be dangerous. I've seen many times stories of uh, people going out to the woods unaware, unprotected, and come back missing a limb or not come back at all. And uh, that's not me. I always have some sort of protection. Whether it's a knife, my trusty axe, this baby is razor sharp. I've always got something. <clears throat> okay, it's time to cook some lunch. Today, I've got with me a trusty little grill. This will go right over top. Bada boom, bada bing. Stopped at the meat market on my way and got myself it's my clean knife. Nice slab of 100% beef. It's a little Denver steak. Beauty. Look at that. That's lunch. Am I living good or what? Yeah, this is my little Schrade knife. It's the SCH 401. LAL Black, what it says on there. This knife's been a beautiful little knife. I've used it for all sorts of things. It stays sharp. It's a high carbon steel. It stays plenty sharp enough. I love this knife. It works great for everything. It fits in your pocket nicely. It's still legal to carry. Carry it everywhere. I love my Schrade knives. A lot of people complained about Schrade knives in the in the past, saying that they're they're cheaply made. They are cheap to buy. That's one of my favorite things. Of them, you know me, I like cheap. Um, but over the last couple of years, they've increased their quality. Um, I don't know if they've had new management or what it is, but they've really increased their their steel that they use for the blades is a much better steel. I will write somewhere either in the comments or up above my shoulder or something what type of steel it is that they're using in a lot of their knives a lot stronger holds an edge better I've used this one for all sorts of things I have not sharpened it since I got it out of the box this is as is it she is plenty sharp I mean I, I can yeah I can I can shave with it and I've used that a lot 
but I'm sitting here making it dirty, ain't I? My other trade knife that I love, this guy right here, this thing's a beast. And uh, she holds a great, great edge. This is the SCHF3N. It's, it's pretty heavy, it's a heavy duty knife. Uh, this is great for processing wood, for batoning. You'll see that in some of my other videos. My son even uses it. Uh, works great for that. It's thick. It's like, it's a quarter inch thick. You are not going to bend or break this. High carbon steel, you can spark with it. Uh, she's a beauty. She is heavy. I will admit that. She, it weighs quite a bit. I bet you it weighs, I don't know, a pound and a half maybe. It is pretty heavy, but when you're processing wood, you need the weight. So that's a beauty knife. I don't use it for carving or anything like that. If I'm going to do feather sticks, I have another shred knife that I use for that. Um, or more commonly, I use this. This is my Gerber. Uh, it's the 87-1015-D1. It's, it's a nice little knife. Uh, I forget exactly what it's called. Again, I'll, I'll put that up above my shoulder or something, wherever it fits on the screen. But um, it's a great knife. I've really enjoyed this knife. What I like about it, it's it's pretty thick, but when it tapers down here on this on the grind right here, it tapers down nicely. Uh, you can really um, do some nice feather sticks and stuff, and do some fine work with it. It's got a long enough blade that you can still you could process wood with that, no problem. Uh, it's always held an edge. I've sharpened it a few times, but it held, it's held an edge quite a bit, quite good. I've been using it for over a year now. It's been beautiful, my little Gerber. Made in Portland, Oregon, USA. So I love USA made stuff. That's one of the reasons why I like Gerber. Um, it's not the Bear Grylls. It's the same thing as the Bear Grylls, really, um, except it doesn't have all the orange on it or his name, which means it's a whole lot cheaper. I bought this thing on Amazon for 30 bucks. Um, can't beat that. Beautiful knife. I know I should probably be feeding that from underneath, but I'm being lazy. It's too beautiful today out here to be stressing about anything. As she cooks down, or as she burns down a little bit, I can fold my legs of my little grill here under and set it down closer to it to cook a little faster. I probably will end up doing that because right now she's cooking kind of slow. Be careful when you're doing this kind of stuff. It gets hot. The last thing you want to do is <laughs> drop your steak on the ground. That would be horrible. Another great feature of this kind of cooking over top of a uh, Dakota fire pit, um, you can take some green sticks, some saplings, cut them down to yay long and put them over top of that and you could cook right on top of those saplings. You could use a pot to boil water or you can even cook a piece of meat, maybe a fish or something over that. I'm being smoked right now. So you could cook a piece of fish, a piece of meat, whatever over top of that and uh, those green sticks, those saplings won't burn because they have too much sap in them, the green wood, and they'll last for quite a while. I mean eventually they'll burn but it'll take quite a while for that to happen. So that's a really good way to, uh, to cook over. Ooh, I can hear it sizzling. Can you hear it sizzling? Man, I'm, my mouth is watering just, just thinking about it here. I might have to stop at the store and pick up a couple more of these on my way back. They had them on sale, Denver Steaks, for uh, $4.99 a pound. And that was uh, three quarters of a pound right there. I'm eating good. She's starting to sweat. I mean, she's cooking it. You see the, the drops forming on top.
just sending some pictures to my my buddy who's at home I think he's doing some cleaning and stuff and I'm out here having steak on a Dakota fire pit <laughs> oh yeah life is good I'd say she's done. All right, let's see how we did, huh? I like mine uh, somewhere around the medium rare mark. Oh yeah, that is perfect. Got some pink in there, but not bleeding. Beautiful. Mm. Mm hmm. Just getting some jealous comments from my friend here. <laughs> She's so juicy. Blah. That's just perfect. Oh yeah, pink still. But not bloody. Mmm. Everything tastes better when you're in the woods. I don't... Not that Denver steak could taste bad. It tastes so much better when you're in the woods. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that'll be it for today. I'm gonna pack things up and head back up to the truck. Go home, stop at my buddy's house, uh, who I was texting earlier and showing all my lovely pictures to. And, uh, well, I hope you've enjoyed today's little uh, outing into the woods, today's little adventure. I've had fun, can't beat it. Beautiful, beautiful April day. Thanks for joining. And uh, if you get a chance, please, uh, Click on the like button below and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Um, that would really help me out, help uh, get this channel going. I would appreciate that. So thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you out on the trail. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Check out some of my other outdoor adventure videos. I have a lot of fantastic videos to come as I continue hiking, bushcraft, and all things outdoors and bring it all to you. Stay tuned.